Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is 666. <laughs> I left alone, my mind was blank I needed time to think, to get the memories from my mind What did I see? Can I believe That what I saw that night was real and not just fantasy Just what I saw in my old dreams were the reflections of my woman staring back at me Cause in my dreams It's always there The evil face that twists my mind And brings me to despair Yeah!
We are on the air. Hi, Michelle. Hey, how you doing? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Planet B, period, O, period, B, period. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the bug out bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tonight, we're going to be discussing Hurricane Michael. Not only the effect of Hur- Hurricane Michael, but what some people are thinking is the cause of these things that are happening. So, interesting. It is It is definitely some interesting timing, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, first, Hurricane Michael. There's, there's a lot of good stats on this. I mean, it is just insane how strong this hurricane got it's so yes fast. so quickly because it was a, a cat two and it, it wasn't long and boom hit land it's a cat four it was that was crazy well it, it just started you know right right there you know and wasn't it in the caribbean where it started like like on in the, the golf the, there in the golf yeah, the, the, the bottom part, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like it started out and they thought it was going to be a tropical storm. And right. It a tropical storm forever and just suddenly just blew up. Just boom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they said it was like the third strongest hurricane in history was like the, the pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. The barometric and, pressure. Yeah. Yeah, and it came to, and it came ashore at Cat Four. Yeah, when it was just barely under a Cat Five. Right, and that was insane yeah. because it yeah. had been categorized as a Cat Two. Next thing you know, it's a Cat Four hitting land. I'm like, whoa! Yeah, and and it, it it was just barely under the wire. Yeah, for being a Cat Five. So, and it and it hit, and it not only affected Florida. They're all the states above, even like North Carolina, yeah. I mean, just went through like a friggin' bulldozer. I mean, there was flooding and tornadoes and so many things. And right now, even after it's been a while, you know, not a while, but you know, yeah. a few days, it's like there's still over 200,000 people in Florida alone that are without power. Yeah. Um, and there's. 100,000. And they're still saying uh, in Mexico Beach, that area, uh, there's 37 people they uh, can't find. So, oh yeah, yeah. And 30 was it 38 confirmed dead? Something like that. Yeah, was, something like that. Yeah, but they're still looking I mean, for people. So uh, apparently, yeah, that, that, that's a very good point because a lot of people think that if if it's not like right in some popular U.S. city that. That's all the damage that it did. Right. No, 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 no. And there's so many more. Yes. Different islands and things. And, you know, it's like it, the, it's not in the United States that this hurricane yes. affected. Yes. Um, and they're saying, like, you know, 265 people along there did not evacuate. They stayed. Why? Yeah. And I, I can't understand why you would do that. I... Well, a lot of people are just hardcore, and a lot of them it's kind of like it's kind of like with tornadoes in the Midwest, you know. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who lives in California can't understand why if there's a tornado warning, you're not hitting the deck the second the sirens go off, and you, you know, and most of us are out there with cameras taking pictures. Mm-hmm. And it, it's yeah. kind of the same way with a hurricane; they get so many watches, so many warnings, and. So many false alarms and, you know, all these things that they get to the point that are like, hey, I have a hurricane. I went through Hugo. I went through Andrews and did this. And this is nothing. You yeah. Know? Well, actually, it, I'm sorry. It was 285 people. They defied the mandatory evacuation. Yeah. And why? I, I, there's a reason for this. Don't do that. Now 37 people oh. are missing. Exactly. And, well, but that's the thing, though. So many people get stubborn, like I said. You know, how many people die trying to get pictures of tornadoes? Yeah, very true. Uh, how many people die from not getting to their basement in time because they just wanted to just wait just long enough to where they could see the tornado close up and it's the yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah. Um, just forget those phones and shit, people, honestly. Uh, is yeah. it worth your life or somebody else's life? No, absolutely not. Exactly. Well, well, the thing that makes me mad is, like, if you want to mess with your own life, that's one thing. Yeah. 
don't drag your family into it. Mm-hmm. That pisses me off. Oh, yeah. Me that when makes... I hear stuff like that. Yeah. That that people had left, you know, made their family stay with them. Yeah. Their wife, their yeah. children. And next thing you know, they're, they're just seeing them on top of rooftops. Yeah, now we have to rescue floating, you. Yes. Yeah, or floating down the river on top of a freaking house, yeah, you know, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah now you the know. people have to go out to you because you were too stubborn to evacuate like you were supposed to. Um, exactly. And that now the Mexico beaches, uh, they're shocked by the destruction. What did you think was going to happen? I just wonder sometimes. What did you think was going to happen? Um, I mean, it is devastating. I think a lot of people were thinking like Hurricane Florence, even though Hurricane Florence yeah. did do some damage. It didn't do as much as people thought. No, more flooding you know what I and mean? stuff than anything. So, yeah. But that's the problem. They had that and, you know, they evacuated everybody like they should have. And not a lot happened. I mean, you know, enough happened, but yeah. not it was more uh, catastrophic know. flooding than anything uh, with yeah. Florence. It was more flooding and uh, things yeah, like that. But still. So, Mike, so then Michael comes along <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's not going to happen. Now, it's really interesting. My ex and his wife live in Florida. They, they oh. live in uh, Blountstown, you mm-hmm. know, down in the Panhandle. Ah. They left on the very day it was coming. They literally had 150 mile an hour winds barking at their heels. Oh. Now, what's really odd about their situation is they, they live in a trailer. Oh. Now, they left and they came back and their entire neighborhood, the only thing that was standing was their damn trailer. Oh my God. Oh my God. And, but their porch was gone. Oh. But, but our trailer was still there, so that I just found that really odd. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I know a lot of people who did that though down there. Wow. They, they stayed or they waited till the last second. But but like I said, it comes on the same thing. Like like you know, being in the Midwest, you hear oh tornado warning, you're like yeah yeah whatever, you know, because you get so used to hearing it and not seeing it that you don't panic anymore. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think that was kind of crazy. Me personally, if I seen a cat four coming at yeah, my ass, I would be gone. Yeah, I'd be out of yeah. here. A cat four. I mean, do people, I don't know if people, they should realize by now what kind of destruction that is. Especially since yeah. it was, like you said, un, right under a cat five. And that yeah, is like. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. Well, there's. Have you heard the conspiracies that are coming out about this now? Oh, probably. I don't know. What do they got? Harp, of course. Uh huh. Um, everybody knows in 2014, Harp closed their doors, and then they right. basically did on a, a paper need basis. Right. Okay, and what people don't understand is Harp is where they send up these waves into the atmosphere. These um, ultrasonic waves are supposed to like mess with the what was it, the or the aurora borealis or something like that? Oh, okay. For record. Let me look it up here. I'll tell you exactly. But anyways, Harp, ironically, in September, opened their doors. Oh. Or something, and they've been messing with stuff now. A lot of people believe that Harp is something that can mess with the weather. Oh, no kidding! I hadn't heard that. But, one. Yeah. Well, and and and. Harp admits by the U.S. Air Force that they can't control the weather. Oh. And a lot of people think it's being used. It was first um, brought to, it's called the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program. Okay. That's what Harp is. And what it does is it sends like these, these high frequency waves up into the atmosphere. And they claim it, it's to, you know, you know, check the atmosphere or whatever the waves were the... Um, like the Northern Lights type thing, just up in Alaska. Now, a lot of people believe that, and I believe it too, because they, they, they say that if a butterfly flaps its wings or whatever high enough in the atmosphere, uh-huh. it'll screw up the weather. Okay. okay. So a lot of people believe that they're using this to control weather. And if you really think about it, like if, if you're in a fight somewhere, you're you're at war or something, all of a sudden this great big monsoon comes, well, you know, that, that could mean the difference. Wow. If your guys 
your guys know it's coming. We talked about something about controlling the weather once, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that's kind the of... The park opened its doors again in September. Wow. Some private organizations have been screwing with it or whatever, and all of a sudden we've got these massive hurricanes showing up. Oh. Um, whether one has something to do with it, I don't know. Wow. Oh, I, I mean, a lot of people are saying global warming. I don't believe that. Not that I don't believe in global warming. Mm-hmm. I would never say that because you can't have this many people on the planet and not have stuff warm up. But yep. I don't believe that it's warmed up that much no. No. to affect the weather that greatly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't see it because it's, it's kind of like I, I don't see the temperature. Years ago, we did an experiment. This was, I'm trying to remember when it was. It was like late 80s, something like that. And we had a teacher actually talking about global warming then. Wow. And we did this, we did this experiment. We put a cup full of ice in a broom closet. And they measured how long it took for the, the cup of ice to melt. Okay. You know? Yeah. So then we added a few more people into the broom closet. And waited it out, you know, whatever had a radio, and everybody's just kicking back, you know, and it was claustrophobic as all hell. And, of course, the ice cubes melted a little bit faster, but not that much faster. Right, right. With people in the room. So then we added a heater, and, you know, all this. Well, know, yeah, you add a heater, that's going to be. And then, well, yeah, well, well, then in the end, the hypothesis was basically that the ice really didn't melt that much. I mean, it melted faster, but not that much. Right. Because it was on the floor. Uh-huh. For the cup yeah. Of gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I... But, I, but this is what the thing is, heat rises, and that's what these people are saying, that the atmosphere is reacting. But I just I just don't see it reacting that... No, drastically. That yeah, no. Quick. No. That, that quick. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree. I, I, I could agree. be wrong. I'm definitely not a scientist. I don't study this stuff, but before we start getting hate mail on on uh, global warming, I, I don't even want to hear it. You know? Yeah, I'm yeah, me saying, either. I just, yeah. I'm just saying I can't picture it, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it is kind of weird, though, that Harp all of a sudden comes back in the news, and now we got this great big catastrophic hurricane. Yeah, yeah, wow. That popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. And then suddenly it, it went from, like, a tropical storm to a cat two to a cat four, and just, you know, it seemed yeah. like a matter of hours. Yes, yes. You know? <laughs> I, was, I was shocked there was a cat four when it hit. I was like, what? Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, I had just saw that it was a cat two. And that's what, yeah. the, you know, at first they're expecting. When they upgraded it to a cat bar, I'm like, holy crap. Um, I, the uh, the devastation is crazy. They're saying, you know, months before power is back on to everybody. Months. Oh, yeah. In, in Florida alone, that there's over 200,000 people without power. Yeah. Yep. And they're saying it's going to be up to three months. Yep. And there's over... Yeah. Uh, 300,000 North Carolina and Virginia. So, uh -huh. And those were from just like the severe storm that right. came with the ugly thing. Yep. So, yep. yeah, it, it's insane. But like I said, it, it is strange. I mean, I don't want to go too much down the conspiracy hippie trail. Right, trails, right, but, yeah. Um, I do find it kind of odd, though, because like Harp is something that was brought to us years ago, hmm. well, was put into the limelight by Jesse Ventura mm -hmm. on his show. I remember that. Story, which, by the way, was yes. called off air, and he was kind of, you know, shunned into obscurity because Be yeah. he did something really wrong to piss off the government. But, yeah, yeah, that's exactly um, what happened. Harp is something that, that he brought to light, yep. and, of course, they say, oh, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not anything we're, we're studying, but yeah. you can't have high frequency of that magnitude going up in the atmosphere and not have something happen. Oh, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? Oh, yeah. I just don't see how that's possible. So I, I mean, agree. I would just keep an eye on things there. If anybody's really paying attention to really kind of watch them. I hadn't been watching them. I had just noticed uh, a couple days ago, somebody was talking about Harp and how they had some. They had just opened their doors again. 
Wow. Just like last, yeah, last month. Yeah, so. makes you, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Well, of course it does. That's yeah. That's absolutely insane to me that, you know, and, 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 and it was run by the Air Force for the longest time. Wow. Wow. Be interesting right. to find out some more about <laughs> this for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We need to know really, like, really, you know, look at, like, what people have been saying and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Like I said, I personally don't know what to believe, but uh, all I know is this extremely strong hurricane yes. hit the Florida Panhandle and other states. It just affects people so greatly. Floods, high wind, buildings gone, just everything destroyed, and a lot of these people were not prepared. No, and but there were plenty of warnings or mandatory evacuations. And uh, no, they were not. The uh, people were not. And um, it, it's sad to to realize this that they just kind of fluffed it off, more or less. They I don't really get a lot of people did. They didn't have the food. They didn't have enough water. No, there's relief efforts going on right now oh, yeah. down there. It was like the American Red Cross is wonderful. They've done so much. Um, FEMA has been down there, but I haven't heard a whole lot about what they're doing. No. I know the Red Cross is really stepping up. Yeah, and yeah. They helping out a lot of people, and there's a lot of different organizations that are down there. So, I mean, if you want to help anybody that's listening, you want to help, I mean, me personally, I think American Red Cross is the way to go, but you can always look up different organizations in the area down there and see what's going, who's going down there. You know, and if you want to donate, like I said, even two bucks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it, it adds up. It adds up. It absolutely does. Uh, exactly. You, you you have a, a thousand people donate two bucks. That's two thousand dollars. Absolutely. That's exactly right. So it does add up. Yeah, it's it, it it just amazes me how many people just like okay, whatever, and. I mean, uh, put their lives on the line for this. And it was, uh, and uh, the devastation was, uh, it was, uh, I mean, you can't even recognize some of these it's places catastrophic. anymore. Catastrophic. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Look at some of the before and after pictures. It oh, my like God, yes. Insanity. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it was just unrecognizable. You couldn't even, you didn't even know what it was anymore. Um the roofs, I mean, it, they were just totally destroyed. Um, and they're still, you know, missing people. So let's hope they're safe and sound mm-hmm. somewhere. Uh, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, but uh, not listening to the mandatory evacuations. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, don't. That, that's the biggest lesson here. I mean, and, and I do understand. Trust me, I do. Because there are people that are living paycheck to paycheck, yeah. and they literally have nothing. They yes. have no way to evacuate. And I do think that the cities and stuff like that need to have shelter in place. And if you're one of those people, and actually they, they do have those. They do have the and shelters. If you're, yes, if you're one of those people that absolutely cannot afford to evacuate, then you seriously need to look up shelters. You need to look up places that you can go to be safe yeah they have they had uh plenty of places open for that um uh you know for the people to go to so they could be safe not you know stay in their homes and get wiped out there i don't i i just you know um the residents in florida are like we need answers Really? You had a Cat 4 hurricane. What kind of answers do you want? I don't well, know. That's what, yeah, that's what I... Um, well, I hate to say this. I mean, and it's true. And I understand everybody wants their power back and they yeah. want stuff back. But a lot of people are really acting like entitled assholes right now. Yeah, thank and you. And the reason I say that, <laughs> you live in a hurricane-prone zone. Right. Okay, you do. You live on the goal. Your chances of you having a hurricane in your lifetime or two or three or four are very good. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't need to be prepared for yourself. You need to have the flashlights, the candles, the generators, the different (laughs) things to prepare yourself for when these things happen. 
You know, there, there's people in Puerto Rico right now that are still out of freaking power. And how long ago did that hurt? Yeah, happen? you know, yeah, that's a whole nother you story, know, though. There, there's people in Flint, Michigan that still don't have freaking clean water. Oh, there you go. And it's yes. like they're, they're, these people, the hurricane happened two days ago, and we don't have power yet. Well, really, it's mine. <laughs> Get in line. You got that right. I feel bad for you. I'm sorry that you're going through this. It's a horrible thing, but yes. you know what? It just happened. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Our government, our government, our city workers, our firemen, our ambulance drivers, people like that, they, they're not Harry freaking Potter. They don't have a wand that they can just fix things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and thank you it's, for this saying shit that. It's going to yeah. take time. I know, they're like, we need answers. Time. I'm like, okay, you just get hit by a cat for a hurricane. I, I think that's all the answer you need. Um, it just <laughs> yeah, irritates me. I seen me. this lady on TV the other day, uh, you know, or I think it was yesterday, and she was like, well, I don't understand why it takes so long to get our electricity back. Oh, oh dear God. God. Seriously? Wow. Yeah, they're, they're holding back on purpose. I'm sure yes. the electric company that wants to make money off you people, by the way. Yeah. Is purposely withholding your electricity. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. Wow. They, they couldn't possibly be trying to, you know, remove trees and things like yeah, that. Debris from the road and or buildings. Find, find people that might still be alive that are buried somewhere, yeah. but for God's yeah. sake, let's worry about your electricity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sound off. You got it. Absolutely. I'm just like. Wow. I, what, uh, I, and there were plenty of evacuation centers open. Um, they had yeah. them all listed. Um, I'm looking at them now. There were plenty. Um, anybody who couldn't oh, yeah. get out, there were plenty open. Um, and this was days before yes. they started planning for this. And, yes. And like I said, I'm sorry, you live in a prone place. And you, you should be, be ready. Prepared. Yes, you it's should be kind ready. Of, it's kind of like saying you live in California, but you're not prepared for an earthquake. Mm -hmm. You know Exactly. Right. Or you live in uh, Colorado, Minnesota, you're not ready for a blizzard, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, same difference. You should be ready for this, for anything like that. You're, you're tornado prone. And, and I understand things happen. Sometimes you're not always prepared, but you at least be even minimalistic prepared. I mean, for God's sake, find the shelters, find stuff, you know, go to the store, buy some tea light candles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you yes. Need, you know? Now, um, I have an article here that a lot of these shelters opened eight days ahead of time. Eight days yeah. ahead of this hurricane. So, there, so right there's your answers. Yeah. You know, if you want answers, there's your answers. Yep, and they you are listed yourself. where and the addresses. So it was it was there. Um, yeah, eight and days. I, I, I feel sorry for anybody that has to go through anything yes. like this. Uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Blaming. Yeah. You start passing blame. It's like, I don't, you know, the government, they, the, the government tell, didn't tell your ass to move to Florida. <laughs> you know? Excuse me. Yes, exactly. The government didn't tell you, hey, let's go move to a hurricane prone place. You know, the government yes. didn't tell you to not be prepared. Right. You did that all on your own. Yep. So it, it's like when you get help is when you get help. I'm sorry. Yeah, it will come. Don't you know? But you're not entitled to be first. I'm sorry. They're going yeah, as fast as they can. There are uh, power companies from all over down there, all over different states. They've come down to help. So uh, and there's so much debris to move. Uh, they can't even yeah. get to some of it right now until they well, do that. that. The roads that's are blocked. Exactly it. You know, the roads are totally blocked off. Exactly. That that's exactly it. It's like people are moving as fast as they can. They're getting things done as fast as they possibly can. Whether it's our government or private organizations, they're doing what they can. You know, I don't I don't know what our government's doing, I don't know about FEMA, but I can tell you for a fact that I know independent contractors that went down there, people that went down there as volunteers not being paid right. to go down there and clear shit out and yes. get stuff going. Absolutely. There are firemen that are donating their time to go down there. Yes. To help people, to rescue people. You know, there's nurses that have gone down there. Oh, yeah. That have volunteered their time. Yes, these are volunteers. They don't yeah, have so to do this. Yeah, so part of me, princess, if you don't have electricity after a few days, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. And I think it, I, I hope she listens to herself, you know, in that interview, because I, I just, it, yeah. they even had livestock shelters open just to let you know about that. Exactly. And they airlifted, well, I mean, they airlifted a yeah, hundred cats to shelters. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. I think a lot of that just has to do with like age and stuff too. And like, you know, entitlement and all that. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. know, just like people just saying that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, well, go and remind me of my children. Well, mom, just go get more money. Just go to that machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just <laughs> write a check. Everything. It'll be okay. Everything has to be a task. <laughs> yeah. Or just write a check. Yeah. It'll be okay. Um, yeah. Just write yeah. another check. Sure. Why not? Uh, but yeah, there was, uh, there was plenty of opportunity to, be ready and get ready for this. There was, um, um, they knew ahead of time, you know, yeah, it was a tropical storm. They figured it would be a hurricane. I don't think they anticipated the cat four, almost five. Uh, but you know, the city governments, um, uh, and the governors and stuff, they were on this. Uh, they already, oh, yeah. yeah, they, they were they on were. it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they were. And even the, you know, the Weather Channel, CNN, all this, mm-hmm. you know, Fox News, all they, they were on that shit, like when it was just a little blip on the screen, you know. Yep. <laughs> Good to them, see there know. wasn't any uh, dramatic acting this time, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of things I did for <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh, <laughs> really I know, funny. that was hilarious. <laughs> Oh my God, that was great! Yeah, I was like, "What?" <laughs> Photo bomb. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, so so quick quiz. Okay, this is for Denise Harris. Um, okay, you live in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, you live in a hurricane prone zone. What steps are you going to take ahead of time, like way ahead of time, to prepare for a hurricane to come? Oh, gosh, I'm going to have... Um, but what kind of supplies are you going to have on hand, just in case? Um, the water, of course. I'll have water in in the uh, pantry, probably. Water. Um, absolutely. Flashlights, batteries, cash. Um, uh, extra clothes. Medicines. Um, have my animals taken care of. They will come with me, Absolutely. Um, blankets, food, of course, you can get the packets and I do have some of those. Um, and let's see, what else do do I have? A first aid kit, of course, uh, I have that, um, make sure all, all the kids stuff. If you have kids, uh, I'll have, uh, the animals, I have cats and a dog, so I'd have to have plenty of, uh, food for them and, uh, their stuff they need. Um, like I said, water, food, first aid kit, flashlights, batteries, cash, of course, would be in there, uh, medicines that you need, uh, first aid kit. Um, and I'd be, uh, you know what? I would be out of there. I absolutely would be out of there. I would not stick around either. Okay. So what are you going to bring with you? I, everything I have in there, ready to go. Bring, all your water, bring your water, food, the whole business. Yep. Everything, absolutely, that I have Good ready. Job. Yes. Okay, let, let, let's say like you're dead in your head, you didn't prepare for anything. Suddenly there's a hurricane coming, they're predicting it's going to be to you within two to three days. It's going to be a big one, you have nothing. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to find out where the shelters are, the closest one to me, and that's where I'm going. Are you going to try to bug out? Um, If I could, yeah, but if I can't, then it's a shelter. I will find the uh, find a shelter. And this is another thing that um, a lot of people don't think about when they do stuff like this is they'll be like, okay, well, we need to hurry up and we need to bug out, blah, 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 blah. So what they'll do is they will go, okay, in the town now where this hurricane's coming, mm-hmm. and they're going to try to buy supplies, no. water, food, No, whatnot, you better, you, you should know, have that everything. already. Yeah. But if you don't, you know, you don't want to go and pay because, number one, they're going to inflate the prices. Oh, That's yeah. What these, this, that is what these sick bastards do. I'm sorry, they yes, do. Yes, they do. They will inflate the prices. They'll charge like six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars for a case of water. This is what you're going to do. If you can afford to buy out, 
you need to get some gas in your car, even yep. though even if it takes hours. Mm-hmm. Get some gas in your car. You have to go hungry for eight, nine, ten hours. Get the hell out of there. Go to another state. And, yes. You know, to drive, drive, drive six, seven hours, whatever, however, how long it's going to take you to drive two, three hundred miles, and go buy your supplies there. It is going to be a lot less. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But you should already yeah. have it. If you ha- if you if you know, you should have that stuff. You shouldn't have to wait for the shelves to be empty to get your water. That's for sure. No, you, no, you and gas. You know how they they, they they inflate that gas too, man. They're they're greedy son of a guns, boy. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And also, filter straws is another thing. Mm. You can carry those so lightly. Yeah. Just throw them in your trunk, your purse, whatever. Have these life straws. There you go. Will filter any nasty ass water and make it drinkable. There you go. So you can even stop off on the side of a ditch and get some water. You know yeah, whatever you have to do. Without boiling it first, but, you know, hey. Yeah. There yeah. You go. But, yeah, uh, like you said, though, in these prone areas, I don't care, like in the uh, upper Midwest, you have blizzards, um, the earthquakes, uh, the, the hurricane-prone areas. You, uh, stuff, you should have stuff ready, uh, already for this. You know, just... Exactly. I, I, exactly. I, I don't understand not being prepared for a hurricane, that's for sure. Um, even if it's a tornado. I mean, you could... Uh, <laughs> Some of those tornadoes yeah. are, uh, you know, could be an F2, F3. Uh, they're pretty strong. Well, and, and I've said it before. I've said, you know, I, I understand it. Believe me. I understand living paycheck to paycheck. I don't know anybody who doesn't understand yeah. that. Yeah, very but true. But there are things you can do. You don't have to have top of the line everything. No. You don't have to have top of the line. But you can go to the damn dollar store, Dollar Tree, for God's sake, have yes. like, the, the, these camp, you know, lighters where you can cook on it. And they, yep. can, they have carbs. There's, you can buy water there. There's so many things that you can do. You know, first oh, aid yeah. kits. There's, there's so many things that you can buy at the dollar store. Absolutely. And if you go get a paycheck here, a pay, you know. They have ba- little bags. I, you know what I like about the dollar store? And I really like these, too. Um, I have them for Dakota for snacks. They have the smaller, they have small bags of cereal like your cinnamon toast oh, yeah, they're a buck a bag and they're so worth it and i love the cinnamon toast crunch anyway so <laughs> yeah, and, and you you will hear a lot of old preppers yeah but you're a buy it cheap you get you but i'll tell you what when you have nothing yes and a hurricane has done take everything that you have and you have nothing you have no electricity you have nothing that dollar store shit is going to feel like oh you're gold. not kidding you're, you're not kidding <laughs> When you have no light and suddenly you have tea light candles or you have a flashlight or you have, you know, just whatever kind of light you have. There, there's food, there's different things. First aid kit, if you get yes. a cut, trust me, that dollar store stuff is going to be gold. You're not you. kidding. And they have so, some great oh, stuff. Yeah. I love those little bags of cereal. I think they're great. Absolutely, and then there's so many things that they have dried fruits there. They have oh, yes. granola mix. They have trail mix that has like raisins, peanuts, the whole. I've seen those bags there. Yeah, and then that's uh, that's great. And you know, a situation where you need the protein, you need the carbs, you need everything. So it's like there's there's so much that you can do. Do not be stuck like these people. There are people down there stuck with nothing. Yes, they have nothing. Mm-hmm. They don't. Yes. They don't have it. They have nothing. I mean, the, the, the house might still be there or whatever, but they have nothing. No. They have no electricity. They nope. have no food. They have no water. Nope. Nothing. Nope. Do not be these people. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Listen, Waiting listen. for the government. Yes. Waiting for something that to come and save their lives. <laughs> yeah, and Red Cross. Yeah, they're getting in water, but, you know, you're not going to get a case of water, okay? You're not going to get what right. you want. You're going to get what they can give you. Um, okay. and, I, and then there, those people go down with those portable washing machines, but they're not there yet because they can't get through. No, the roads are totally... So have a way to wash your clothes, and it's the most simple thing in the world. Have a five-gallon bucket. Yep, there you for go. For God's sake. You know, put a little bit of washing powder and get you a, a plunger with some holes in it, throw some holes in it, 
boom, you, you've got a washing machine. There you go. It's that easy. It's that easy. And a, a potato masher, for God's sake. Yeah. A potato masher can help wash your clothes. I still have one, so I don't know how many people do, but I use the old-fashioned way. I mash my potatoes like that. I'm sorry. Exactly. It is. There's just so many things that you can do, and it's like, I hate that when people, I, I see these, these disaster scenarios, and people are like, well, we don't have nobody to wash our clothes. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you just, yeah, it's just we'll like... We'll discuss some things here. You're down in Florida. You've got water all around. Yeah. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> if you've got even just a little bit of a, a water soap or some tar, yeah. it, it, you've got a way to wash your clothes, okay? You got it. Uh, there, there's no need to be looking like people from Waterworld. No, you can be clean. <laughs> yes, yes. You can keep yourself clean. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, um, I just feel I feel so bad for these. But can you ima- I can't even imagine going through something like that. I really can't. Yeah, I can't either. But, but it's like I said, you know, there's nobody to blame here. No, no, no. It's so, how it is. Yeah. It's how it is. But if you have these things ready to go, um, you'd be surprised, uh, uh, you know, how much that will make it your life easier after the fact, honestly. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you, you This is the thing. It's like, <laughs> it, it bugs me after these events. It bugs me. Where's the hell? Where's our hell? Who's coming to help us? Like, yeah. really? Yeah. And first of all... Do you have stuff <laughs> in line to help your damn self to begin with? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, with the, you know, the National Weather Service and that, they give you plenty of warning what is going to happen. Exactly. So, it's, it's not like it's a scenario of, you know, like, like back when, like, Galveston got hit, like, yes, back in the 1800s, yes, where yes. it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, boom, <laughs> hey, yeah. Files, that's probably a <laughs> yes. Got that right. Oh, yeah. You know, now we, there's warnings, um, you know. They were telling people, you know, this is this place has to evacuate, uh, but they didn't listen, and it really breaks my heart because now there a lot of people are missing. Uh, they don't know if they're alive or dead. So, um, well, like I said, I do understand when you can't. I understand. There's some people they don't have a car, or maybe they're handicapped, or, yeah. or you know, and, and the only person, you know yeah. transportation they have is their wheelchair, or or maybe they're homeless, or you know, there, there's lots of reasons why somebody yeah. might not be able to evacuate. Yeah. But like you said, these shelters. But also, okay, this is another scenario. Um, there was a story where some scumbag molested a six-year-old girl. Oh, yes, shelter. I saw that. That is, oh, my God. Um, okay. So this is another thing you need to be prepared for. If you go to a shelter, number one, keep an eye on your kids. Yes, please. That's like number one priority, you know, boom. You keep an eye on your children. Number two, you when you go in there, you make sure your things stay with you at all times. You don't leave your things. No, don't be wandering around. Yeah. Exactly. You know, uh, a lot of people don't go to shelters, though, and I'll tell you the number. You know what the number one reason why most people don't go to shelters? Why? They can't bring their pets. Ah, ah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I was reading that. It was like 72% of, you know, 72% of people that, that don't go to shelters are reason being if they can't bring their pets. Ah. But this is why a lot of pets end up being abandoned. Right. Right. During these storms, yeah, like, like people always say, "Oh, those horrendous owners!" Oh, yeah, horrendous <laughs> owners. These poor pets. Yeah, you know, people. Most people don't just leave their animals. Like, oh well, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> no, <they're, laughs> trust me. These people do this with a very, very, very heavy heart. Yes. Yes. Because they're basically being told, either your children or your pets. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, the children. Well, you're not, our, our pets you're not are children. Send your children to a shelter by themselves. No. You're no. not going to send them away. And you feel horrible, but I mean, I'm sorry. If it came between my cat and my children, I love my cat, but I would set my cat free and say, I yeah. pray that you survive. Well, at least you're not <laughs> putting it in a thing or a cage or something and leaving them. No, you're no, not. No, I would not do yeah. that. Yeah. No. But, but no, I mean, and that's what people don't understand. You always hear these words, oh, it's horrible, or do they need to be hung? And, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like you people don't understand but most of these people when they leave their pet it yeah. is like the last resort it's not something they want to do no no it's they don't not. want to leave their pet they don't just want to be like oh well it sucks to be you bye bye they know if they have to go to a shelter or they have to, or if they're being rescued yeah. they cannot be bring their pets with them and I always hear these jurors go oh well I'm staying with my pets you better I would never go be rescued well then fine you know you, you watch your children go off with these rescuers you don't know yeah. so you can stay with your dog yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's you know I'm sorry uh, you know like I said I believe pets are part of the family but that, that's where it comes from the place where you need to be prepared yes absolutely and you don't want your your fine little friend or the member of your family to be forced to be left behind yeah scared and alone, then you need to make preparations ahead yes, of time. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, you, even if you're not prone to anything, a tornado could happen. So always have a plan for that. Always have a plan yeah. for that. Because my, my dog is my my child now. So, yeah, I would definitely, you know, if I bug out, exactly. he's coming with me. Exactly, happened and it was a choice between your dog and your grandchild. Yeah, of course. Um, well, gee, I don't know. Of course my grandchild. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Of course, my grandchild. But, oh, yeah, I would be in tears over that. I, I would hate to do exactly. that. Exactly. You would do, like I said, most of these people that leave these pets, it's not like they're just like, they're, yeah. they're these cruel, these cruel animals that are like, oh, screw you. Don't. Some of them are. I'm well, so, yeah, I'm not saying there's not. There, there's yeah. always going to be some. But for the most part, people don't yeah, just leave no. their animals. No, that's a last a thing. a heavy heart. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Not like that jerk who put him in the cages in the last in oh, Florence. Oh, that made me so mad. Oh, I was like, why oh. would you do that? Oh, my. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, somebody left their dog, but they left them in cages yes. while there was flooding going out. So these poor dogs had been sitting in these cages yes. with nowhere to go with this water rising. And thank God somebody yes. saved them. Yes, they did. Yes. But God knows how long these poor babies were sitting in that I know. Water. I felt so bad for them. I was like, why would you put them in a cage like that? Oh, my God. At least let them loose. Right. They have a chance. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, wow, wow. But, so, yeah, have I a mean, plan. And, and I know it sounds like, like we're being very judgy. But mm -hmm. it's like we're, we're trying to help people yes. because it's like... This is basically what happened with Hurricane Michael here is, is the biggest poster for don't let this shit happen to you that I have ever seen in my life. Yes. Yes. You, know? you got that right. <laughs> it's, it's like this, this is like the wake up call that you, you, we've said it before. You need to save yourself. Yes. Thank you. Again. Stop relying on these government organizations. Stop relying on these people. Think you think you're just going to swoop in and save the day like freaking Superman. It's not going to happen for days after an event. Like exactly. So, if not weeks. Yeah, months even. Who knows? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you know, no matter where you are, have a plan. A tornado can hit anywhere. Um, a hurricane can reach far, believe me. Um, exactly. Look at the flooding and everything it caused again in the tornadoes in, uh, in the Carolinas. Again, they're just getting over the flooding that they had. Um, so, you know, be ready. Be have, have your bag ready. Have your stuff ready now. Um, there is no reason. And your house. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Fly with the windows. Yes. Try to get some sandbags for the doors. Do whatever you can. I mean, it's been done. Yes. People say you can't stop flooding, but you can. It's been done. And now they've got those those cool little flood doors. Have you seen those? Uh-uh. No, I haven't. 
They are just the coolest thing ever. They uh go on the door and it like goes along the sides and uh-huh. there's these uh like these rubber things and it goes to the bottom top and it basically puts up like a barricade oh. where your door would be. So the flood water can't get in. Okay. Unless it goes over the windows it's done. But still it can it can rise up to like three or four feet before it would ever get into your house. Ah, that's 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 great. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that like cool? That is. Yeah, so there, there's there's different things now that you can set in place. There's you know, and like I said, there's some people that say their house is just like just sandbags. Yeah, that's true. Sandbags, if nothing else, you know, get some sandbags barriers. Yeah. You know, some barriers, different things like that. It it's it's hard work, but. It could be done, or at least minimalize the damage. Sure, sure, absolutely. If you have a garage, you can keep some plywood in there for your windows and stuff, too. There you go. You know, build a loft up above. You can slide them right up in there. Slide them right up in there. Exactly. So, there's ways you can save your windows to your house. And, like, if you get to a Category 4 or 5 hurricane, I mean... There isn't really a whole hell of a lot that's going to survive. But, no. You know, as far as structural wise. Unless it was built for a hurricane. Yes, yes. And how many places are? Not many. Not exactly. many. Exactly. So, there you go. So, okay. Um, you know, please be patient. Hope everybody, you know, just be patient down there. Um and everybody, you know, down there will survive this. And hopefully, you know, um, you'll be prepared, more prepared the next time for this, I hope. Because, you I know, you. yeah, eventually you're going to get another one there. You know, that's, it's. An, it's inevitable. Yeah. And I love that. Well, something's going on. Because, you know, we've never had a hurricane that strong hit the canyon of what we got. But just on just. A little further west there, uh-huh. on the same Gulf of Mexico, yep. several hurricanes have come up. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it's yes. obviously possible. It's not like some big mystery. It's not some, like, oh, crap. You know? <laughs> there you go. Just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it can't. That's right. And you know in the Gulf, that's where they usually form. So, um, you know, just be ready. Have your stuff ready. Um, it's not it, but just put stuff in there. You're not going to need right away. Uh, but if the power goes out, you are ready. You got your flashlights. You have uh, cash. You have water. Um, you have food. So it doesn't matter. Even if the electricity goes out for a few, you are ready. You have this stuff. What, what's a really big thing that you should have in your bug out bag in case you need to evacuate and everything, even if you don't have a lot of money? What should you have in there to help you survive? Hmm. And especially if you come back and there's no house there. Well, oh, your insurance. Tent. Well, your insurance papers, of course. But well, a tent. Uh, what am I missing? A tent. You oh, a, a tent. tent. Oh, yeah. Yes, there you uh, go. Because yeah. a tent pretty much guarantees you 100% certainty of having a place to sleep. There you go. Anywhere you bug out to. Yep. There you go. Absolutely. Yep. So whether you can afford a hotel or not, or whatever, a, a tent will provide you with, especially in places like Florida, will provide you with a pretty comfortable place to sleep and everything else, you know, stretch your legs and everything. Yeah. For free, unless you I mean unless you have to go to a campground, which isn't going to cost that much. There you go, there uh, you go. So yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I need to put that in there. Yes. Yes, tent is. I mean, to me, a tent in a situation like this, especially if you're going to bug out or whatever, is probably one of the number one things that you should have with you, because that guarantees you shelter in place. Yep. Yep, you're very, very uh, true. Very, very true. So, yes, and you can get, uh, you know, any size tent you need. But, you know, don't forget, you know, you're going to be lugging this around. So <laughs> keep that in mind. You don't need an eight-room uh, tent if you can't carry yeah. it. Yeah, 
<laughs> with the lights hanging and all the stuff, yeah. Um, just a basic ten is all you need. Exactly. Just, just get you a nice little pop-up tent that, yep. you know, they can sleep you and your family. And like I said, that, that, that shelter, you know, where Absolutely. they say three hours without shelter, three days without food or water, you know, yep. three weeks without food. That's how long you can survive. So shelter should be a priority. Yep. Shelter, and Number one. And will provide you shelter in place anywhere you go. There you go. There you go, everybody. So make sure you have these things already. Please, please. Okay. Um, a second half. What are we going to talk about? Oh, Halloween recipes. Um, yeah, we're going to kind of lighten some things up and just get some different Halloween recipes that actually can help you in survival in the fall. And something should happen where you're out in the middle of nowhere and you come across a pumpkin or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> you come across a pumpkin a batch or a corn. It's, it's, it's um, used to go wild. So. <laughs> yeah, or, or a corn maze or anything like that. There you go. Just lighten up the mood and stop talking about all this heavy. But, yeah, definitely, again, shelter, water, food, top priority, yes. clean water, shelter, biggest things ever yes. that you need. Absolutely. First aid. Yep. Food, light source. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Stop yeah, relying on you. the government. Yeah, don't, please. You know, first of all, and first responders, these people have to get there first. And you can't with the roads all full of stuff. Yeah, and that's amazing. A lot of these first responders out there probably lost their damn houses and stuff, too. You got to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And don't, <laughs> I mean, these roads are totally blocked off. How are they going to get to you? So uh, keep that in mind. Don't be, you know, I want my I want my electricity back on. Well, yeah, so does everybody. So. Yeah, that, that lady, I want to reach through and just yeah. beat her up. Yeah, I, yeah. Really <laughs> I hope she looks back and hears herself and realizes what she was saying, honestly, because that's just... <laughs> just Ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> to the extreme. Really? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, on to word, a little lighter note. What kind of recipes you got for us? Um, just, uh, are we doing it right now? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, you know, I thought that we were going to take a break first. Okay. Oh, I don't care. Do you want to take a break? Do you need a break? Yeah, just a short, just a short one real quick. Okay, we will take a break. Let me find some music here to put on. Um, and we will be right back. Right? Yes, we will. Okay, <laughs> so give us a minute and we'll be right back.
And we're back, so uh, we're on to some um, Halloween recipes. So, well, again, it's, it's not so much Halloween, but more or less fall, or, you know, autumn. Recipes. Okay, autumn, it's fall. That, yeah, it's something that you can actually do while you're out trick or treating with the kids or something like that. Just some different, just some different ideas, different things, different take on things. Um, a lot of people don't know this. But back in the days of, like, the pilgrims and things like that, they used to use their pumpkin shells to cook in. Oh, yeah. Yes, they did. They made soup in them and everything. Absolutely, they did. And there, there's a lot of lost recipes out there. And it's something, it's like I said, if you're, <laughs> you're in a fine and you need to cook in something, you can cook in all kinds of things. You can cook in, especially, like, like these vine vegetables like this. Oh, yeah. You know, the different types of uh, squash. Yeah, the squash, like yes. And, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, just any kind of, like, gourds, things like that. You can hollow out, you can do these things. Cause they would, they would um, hollow, you know, get the seeds out in the pulp, and they would put them in, and they would put them, like, on the ashes yep. of the fire, and they would cook like that. There you go. That works. And, and they, 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 there's just such a lost art out there. Oh, uh, yeah. These things that, oh, you know, yeah, exactly. They just, it, you know, but like one of them that, that I found the other day that I thought was just brilliant was uh, like a pumpkin stew. You basically, you kind of use it as a crock pot, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. It sounds so crazy, yeah. yeah. It, it's just a little different. Like you, you do, like you, you take a saute pan, you like just cook up some like stew meat, you know, throw on some onions, potatoes, carrots, you know, that kind of stuff, and just kind of, you know, cook it for a little while, and then put some beef broth in it, you know. And after you haul it out your pumpkin, cut off the top, you preheat your oven to about 325, 350, throw all this into the pumpkin, and put it in the oven. And you can cook it with the lid on or the lid off. Yeah. Um, a lot of people do it with the lid on and kind of keep it authentic to really get that pumpkin flavor in there. Oh, with yeah. Pumpkin off so they can cook faster but you get it in there and it cooks this stew for you know do it for like just like two hours just keep it in the oven keeps your house all nice and toasty and yeah yeah hey that sounds exactly that actually that sounds thing. delicious and you take it out and you just basically ladle out the stew and you know kind of scrape up the sides so you get some like good pumpkin in there oh yeah i like pumpkin i do <laughs> i know so it's like, yeah, I mean, that to me, that is just like one of the, the coolest things ever, is like just to use them, and then you don't even have cleanup for mm -hmm. a pan. Yeah. Nothing. And a lot of people use smaller pumpkins. Oh, yeah, individual. Yes. Individual, exactly. So you just toss it out when you're done. Oh, darn. Yeah, I could deal with that. <laughs> yeah, or put it in a, a bowl, don't you have know, to... to yeah, something to make mulch, you know, something. Yeah, I don't have to <laughs> soak a pan for a week, yeah. <laughs> exactly, just toss it out in the yard, it's free mulch, man. Feed the deer. <laughs> if you know where deer are, go throw them and feed the deer. There you go. Exactly. That's what we and do. Because that's what? what we do here. We have uh, a lot of deer in an area uh, just down the road. And so everybody takes oh, their okay. pumpkins and uh, like their corn things and stuff and then after Halloween, come November, you see them, that deer eat well here, believe me. Oh, I would imagine. Okay, so then the next one is one that I sent you. It's called oh. um, the, the Pilgrim Pumpkin Pie. Yes, that really it looked good. They, yeah, yeah they, they said it wasn't like a traditional pumpkin pie back in the day. You yeah. know, they didn't have, you know... They didn't have, like, just pans of plenty, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? They didn't. It, <laughs> it's basically it was made more like a curd, kind of. Ooh. In, in the pumpkin shell. Yum. It says here to take one small pumpkin, four to five inches in height and about 18 inches in diameter. Uh-huh. Um, sure, sugar pumpkins work great, it says. What's a sugar um, pumpkin? It's just a smaller pumpkin. Oh, okay. And it's, they're, they're really good. It's usually the ones they use in the pies. You know, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pies. Okay. Uh, 
It is about three quarters cup of sugar, three large eggs, plus four yolks. So basically, you're going to need seven eggs. But only three of them are going to be whole. You're going to need the yolks. And you can always save the egg whites for breakfast or whatever you want. Um, a half a tablespoon of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract, two cups of heavy cream, one teaspoon of cornstarch, one pinch of, pinch of salt. Mm. This is basically to prepare this pumpkin, you know, get out the seeds and the little stringy pulp things and all that. It says put, place it on a baking sheet. It says do not put the top of the pumpkin stem on the sheet just yet. It says okay. preheat it to 400 degrees. Um, it says in a mixing bowl, combine the sugar, eggs, and vanilla and whisk until combined. Add heavy cream, cornstarch, and salt and whisk until it's fully combined. Pour mix mixture into your prepared pumpkin, allowing about three quarters of an inch of space between the filling and the top of the pumpkin, and begin baking it. Bake it 400 degrees uncovered. Mm. After 15 minutes, cover the top of the pumpkin loosely with foil. Do not let it touch the top of the custard or it will stick and ruin the appearance. Okay. Bake another 15 minutes. Lower the oven temperature to 375. Place the top of the pumpkin on the tray and continue baking for 15 minutes or more. Remove the foil and bake an additional 30 minutes until knife is inserted and the custard comes out mm. most, mostly clean. So turn off the Turn off the oven, really? Yeah. <laughs> I know, don't you? But you know what? Uh, that has to be in there for some people. Not saying yeah. anything, but yes, that's. <laughs> okay. so don't put your hand on it. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you turn it off now. <laughs> Allow the pumpkin to cool for an hour, then place it in your in your cold garage, loosely covered with wrapper foil, or your refrigerator, and allow the custard to set. Six hours or overnight. Oh, that it just. When ready, oh. Yeah, when ready to serve, scoop out the custard into small dishes. That just you sounds. You can create the size of bed to scoop out some of the pumpkin if you choose to. That just sounds so good. Or I read that and I was I know, like. doesn't it? It really, really does. Oh my gosh. Just. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. That's what I said too. It's like, oh my god! I know that just so, sounds. So yeah, this is something you could do. And, and this, by the way, was soufflébombay.com. This was Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It's amazing. I mean, just so so good. You know, you know, you know what? Another uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I read that, and I'm like, oh, if I have time, I may try it. You gonna try it? I'm seriously thinking about it. I yeah. am too. I hope I have time. Uh, we'll see. I hope I do because, you know, that just, just, uh, it looks so good. To, oh my God, I was practically drooling over that. Uh, so good. Any of these recipes that we put on the air, if you want them, let us know. And uh, either I or Michelle will send it to you, right? Be glad well, to. I'm actually thinking about posting it oh, uh, oh. also on, yeah, giving you the link to the site on KBLP LLP. Yeah. KBLP LLP on Facebook. Yes. If you go there, then, uh, I will have this on there. Good, and good, I'll, good, I'll good. I'll make sure it gets the, this pumpkin recipe. Now, there, there's several uses for pumpkins that people um, don't understand. It's like I said, that a lot of people back then, they, they think like, oh, jack o lanterns but they actually use these, too, just for light to be able to yeah. shield the wind. Oh, that's true, true, true. So it would just, like, cut a hole in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there, wasn't, there wasn't all these bases and things like that, but they would cut a hole in it and put the, whole, the candle in there yeah. to shield it from the wind. Absolutely. It was like a lantern. Yeah. Because lanterns weren't always available because of the oil. Right, right. Um, pumpkins themselves are extremely good for you, which a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Um, it's scraping the seeds out. You can roast oh, the seeds. Or a roast pumpkin the seeds. seeds. Are so, yes. So excellent for you, and they're just so easy to do. They are. They are. I really like them. I haven't made them in a while. So, but yeah, they are so they are good. Just so simple. Take them out, wash them, dry them. You know, get them in some oil, salt. You know, yep. salt, pepper, just salt if you want. 
warm in the oven, you know, 350, 375, yep. even 400, depending on, you know, how fast you want it and how crispy you want it. Just keep an eye on them, you know, stir them up halfway yep. through, get them nice and brown, take them out, they're done. They're I mean, done. It's, it's, yeah, it is a simple, a good snack, too. I love the, I love pumpkin yeah. seeds. I haven't uh, had them for a while. Um, exactly. You know I what else? Pumpkin, you can use a potato peeler on, too. There you go. Get there that you. outer shell off and mm-hmm. you cut the pumpkin and, and you could fry it up in a pan. You have fried, pump, fried pumpkin. It's so... You know... I have not tried this. I am serious. Get some coconut oil. Okay. Just, you, know, you know, the coconut oil doesn't taste like coconut. Right. Um... Put it in a pan, get the pan nice and hot. Do like I said, peel up the pumpkin, cut it up into you know the little squares. Put it in that pan for oh my <laughs> god, it's the diet for. Oh, it sounds good. I wonder if you could put them in. <laughs> you could put the pumpkin in some potato cakes too. That was a good staple oh, back yeah. then. Uh, potato cakes. My daughter loves loved my mother's potato cakes. She absolutely loved them with syrup. Oh my god. All you need, it, it, it don't need much. Uh, potatoes, uh, two tablespoons of salt, half a cup of milk, two eggs, cup of flour. Um, yeah. And I, I bet you if you put some pumpkin in there, that would be really good. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure you could shred the hell out of the pumpkin. Yeah. Right, right yeah. Right shred it, shred it up, and you could probably Ooh. even do it in the morning and fry them up. And fry them up. Like, oh, yeah. And browns have like pumpkin. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> But, but there's a million and one uses for the pumpkin. And like I said, this isn't like, you know, I'm not saying you're going to run into a pumpkin patch of, you know, if the apocalypse. But I mean, it's just definitely something that you can have in your mind that you could use for pumpkins. Because pumpkins, if you grow them yourself, they're very inexpensive. Oh, definitely. I know pumpkins are a little pricey in the stores right now. But, you know, next year, get you some pumpkins. Find you some pumpkins. There you go. They, they practically grow by themselves. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? You just got to keep an eye on the vines, and when, it, when the fruit starts coming out, you know, make sure you keep them turn, you know, get them off the one side. So you, that's how you get those lopsided pumpkins, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they will grow in a container. Yep, that's true. So. Yeah. And, yeah, they say the... Um, the field pumpkins, like you buy for jack o' lanterns, don't use those because those are they're stringy. Um, apparently, they're, I didn't know they called the. They're kind of tough. Yeah, I didn't know they called the smaller ones sugar pumpkins, though. But I learned that yeah. today. So um, didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. The bigger the pumpkin, the less tasty they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, pumpkin breads. Oh, God. Yum, 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 yum. It's real pumpkin. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you can make pumpkin breads. They have the pumpkin soups. It's, yeah. You know, you know, if you're not fond of the pumpkin itself, you can, like you said, always make flavors. Mix it with yeah. potatoes. You know, some sweet, oh, I'll tell you, another flavor. Sweet pea, uh, sweet potatoes and pumpkin. Oh, yes. Oh, Ooh. My God. Oh. The combination of that is so amazing. If you wow. have not had it, you need to have it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try that. I love sweet potatoes. So, um, yeah. They got all kinds yeah, of stuff can, for pumpkins. You can make pumpkin fries. Oh, yeah. Just like you can with sweet potatoes, but you can make pumpkin fries. Yeah. Pumpkin biscuits. Uh, you can make a pumpkin <laughs> facial cream. There you go, Michelle. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> you can use, <laughs> use the pumpkin for a... <laughs> that, this is for you. A um, pumpkin facial mask. There you go. <laughs> There you go. I could see you in that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to paint the mask one time. Did I know. Like, did it do? Did it do anything? <laughs> uh, we 
mean, it comes off as kind of goopy, you know? Yeah. But it tells you to, like, rub it in. It says, just rub. And, and at first, I was like, it kind of felt sticky. I'm like, this yeah. is, is really strange. But then, something weird happened. Uh-oh. Like, yeah. within probably about 10 minutes, it's like it started drying and absorbing. And, like, my skin felt like a baby's butt. I'm oh. <laughs> it was, like, so soft. <laughs> wow. I was like, who is that? <laughs> oh. I've never used one before, so. Yeah, me either. Yeah, not, not a paper one. Yeah, so. yeah not, but you know, have you seen them when I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. They sell them in stores. They just pull them. But yeah, I had never used one before. And I, it's like a big trend right now. Yeah, is it? Yeah. A lot of yeah. people are using these things. And it's like, I, <laughs> I just bought one because it was on clearance. So I was like, ooh, I like this. Oh, I'm going to have to so try like, one now. Tingly. <laughs> like it's nice and cool. I like Ooh, it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I went out in the hall to get some. I scared the shit out of my neighbor's kids. I'd be like, <laughs> 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 and I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, I have a green clay mask that I use, and it's green. It is mint green color, and believe me, yeah, I know. And then my- Cat, my cat, she came out from the room, she looked at me, I was like, hey, Pete, I looked at her, she's like, chick, take her out, I didn't see her for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are, so there you go, a pumpkin facial mask, there you go. There it is, but, yep. but yeah, there's a million and one uses for pumpkin, which is great for survivalists and fibers, because we, we like those things that we could Use, reuse, and have oh, multiple yeah. purposes, you know. Oh, yeah. So, definitely, I mean, look up recipes. There, there are so many, you know, old recipe books. Pumpkin is like a very much a dying... Yeah, art. Um, Almost an art. Fruit or a, what is it, a fruit or a vegetable? Is there a fruit that has seeds? Mm-hmm. I think okay, so. so. Yeah. They can be gone either way, though. It could go savory. Yeah, or because sweet. a tomato is a vegetable, is it not? So, which well, is sure. it? Yeah. I don't know about all that, but <laughs> no, I think it's something like that has to be just type of thing. Yeah. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. Anyways, so, um, but anyways, yeah, look up all these things because pumpkins are definitely something. That is something that went to the wayside because for like, it just seemed like for years people, they just used it for jack-o'-lanterns and that yeah. was it. If they yeah. wanted pumpkin pie, they'd go get the canned pumpkin, you know, yeah. which makes no sense. <laughs> no, because you already have the stuff. Yeah, uh, exactly. I did that a few okay. times, made it from the pumpkin and it they turned out, it, it's so much better. Um, it really is. Uh, but, oh yeah. And like I said, you can peel it with like the potato peeler. Uh-huh. Just peel off that skin. You can cut it. It's just like any other vegetable or fruit that you would yeah. use. Yep. You Absolutely. can peel it, cut it up, put it in your stews. You can put it in so many things. Yeah. Um, I, they're, they're great as a baking dish. You can use them, you know, make your casseroles in. Uh, check out a uh, sausage filled pumpkin. And, um, Ooh, yeah. Absolutely. So, um, sausage filled pumpkin, you bake it inside a pumpkin shell. Uh, it, it's great, you know, because you can, you know, like you said, you compost or go feed the deer. There's, you know, for the shell, there's plenty of, um, uses for it. Um, decorations, of course, um, have your kids, you know, paint on one instead of your traditional Halloween, Absolutely. you know, jack o' lantern. Yeah. So yeah, there's uh, all kinds of stuff you can do with it. So yeah, you I can use them for the decoration. Thing where people were, you know, you of course put gloves on. Yeah. But people were using Kool Aid to color the pumpkin. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Take a pack of Kool Aid, just barely put any water in it to kind of make a paste. Yeah. Well, well first you get your pumpkin, you kind of. Look. Oh, sandpaper, that's what you take a little bit of sandpaper, just kind of rough oh, yeah. it up a little bit, the yeah. outer shell. Yeah. And then you, you take the, the Kool-Aid paste and put it on, rub it on, and then beat it on for a little while and rinse it off and it colors your pumpkin. There you go. There you go. Oh, um, that was kind of a neat idea. Yeah. You can also use them for, uh, you know, flower bases. Um, you want to uh, make sure the bottoms, you have water in the bottom, just make sure the ends are in the bottom. But you can make some great floor arrangements for that um candle oh, holders yeah. of course uh pumpkin pancakes pumpkin soups uh, soups soup 
Good Lord. <laughs> uh, pumpkin smoothies. Um, you know, there's so many things Ooh, you can do with so that. Many. Yeah. Pumpkin smoothies. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of uses for pumpkins. So, um, yeah, people, we should get back to that. We really should uh, yeah, do get that. Get back to the basics. Get back to, like, the, the forgotten things. Yes. Yes. Ooh, pumpkin chili. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I know. So I'm saying that there's so many things out there that you can use. It's like a very multi-tasking, I guess you can say. It's a very multi-tasking. Yeah, multi-tasking. Food, I mean. Yeah, definitely. Oh, pumpkin and let's, chili. Let's, okay, and let's look at the nutritional facts of a pumpkin. Okay. I mean, this is well, just, I, I just had it here. Hold okay. Let me find it again. It is amazing. Okay, while you do that. Uh, pumpkin chili. Oh my gosh. Yum, 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 yum. It's gluten free too. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There's all kinds of it. You can, um, you know, use chicken in it if you want like a chicken chili or a, wow. Yum, 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 yum. Pumpkin chili. Okay, pumpkin, which is also a splash, by the way, mm -hmm. is, um, it says for one cup is 30 calories. It has, um, well, it says 0 0.1, so you might as well say it doesn't have any fat, um, no cholestrol. Mm -hmm. cholesterol. Um, natural sodium is about one milligram. Potassium is 394, so it's through the roof. Um, the vegetable carbohydrate is 8 grams. Protein is 1.2 grams of protein. There's 197% of your daily allowance of vitamin A. It's 2% calcium. And 17% vitamin C, 4% iron. Vitamin B6, it has... 5% of that, magnesium, 3%. So hmm. these are things, I mean, this is like a superfood. Yes, basically. it is. And it's gluten-free for you out there who like gluten-free things. Um, this uh, pumpkin chili, I will post it to KBLP LLC because it looks really good. Um, you got your traditional stuff. But you also add a cup of, uh, half a cup of pumpkin puree, which you can make out of your pumpkin. And, Ooh. oh yeah. So, um, I will share that. Yeah, that looks... Now the pumpkin seeds, too, by the way, has their own little nutritional facts. We gotta listen to this one. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, they have 285 calories, which seems like a lot. But that's for a whole cup. That's not a lot, I don't think. Yeah, for, for a whole cup. And there's 12 grams of fat, but it's um, the good fat. You oh. know what I mean? For the seed. It's, uh, let's see. Saturated fat is 2.3 grams. Poly is saturated 6 grams. of mono, whatever, saturated fat is 3.5. Um, zero percent cholesterol, so no cholesterol whatsoever. Pumpkin seed. Only twelve milligrams of sodium. Potassium is at five hundred eighty-eight milligrams. Total carbs are three, uh, thirty-four, thirty-four grams. But these are with the seeds, so they're great. And there's also, are you ready for this one? Yeah. Twelve grams of protein. Wow, there you go. I have base protein from pumpkin seeds. That's for a cup. Now, and there's also three percent calcium, eleven percent iron, and forty-two percent magnesium. This is just the seed. Yeah, a lot of antioxidants in these uh, pumpkins. A lot of antioxidants, so that's a good thing for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's yeah. so many good things about a pumpkin. Oh it's yeah, good. and, and like I said, it's, it's such a lost thing. Yeah, it is. It is. It really is. So. 
You can even make pumpkin butter, guys. Um, oh, there you go. Use the pumpkin puree, or of course, fresh. Um, sweet apple cider or apple juice. Uh, brown sugar. Maple syrup. A little cinnamon and nutmeg. A little lemon juice. A little vanilla extract. And ta-da. Wow, swirl it in your Ooh, cereal. Oh, yeah, we're going to, uh, I'll post that too. Pumpkin butter. Go figure. So here at Planet VOB, we will tell you everything about anything about anything that will help you survive. And trust me, pumpkins will help you survive. And if you're having a problem with your weight or anything like that, these might be a way to kind of help you with that. <laughs> Actually, they have a recipe for spicy roasted pumpkin wedges. Ooh. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, I'm, not, I'm not normally a pumpkin person, but, but I'm, these recipes are, good. yeah. Um, it's a, a vegan dish, basically, but it's a, you know, small to medium pumpkin, dark brown sugar, cayenne pepper, if you like, just a little, cinnamon, cumin, and sea salt olive oil. You preheat your oven to 400, of course, line it with parchment paper or foil. You cut the pumpkin in half, of course, scoop it out, and you slice it into half-inch slices. Um, and you put it in your bowl and drizzle them with a little olive oil, then mix the sugar and the spices. You bake this for like 15 minutes. Flip over and another like 10 to 12 minutes. Ta-da, they're done. Dang. That sounds like a, ooh, I, I like pumpkin, I do. Uh, so the p spicy roasted pumpkin wedges. Mm, mm, mm. So, yes, I will um, save that also and post that. Totally agree. Yum, 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 yum. Right. Pumpkin butter okay. and uh, spicy roasted pumpkin wedges. So, uh, we'll get those on there for you. Wow. And, and really good. Fashion. Hold on. Let me see if this is a real thing or if it was just something that came up. Because sometimes that happens online. You have some pumpkin recipe. Share them with us. That'd be Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yes. Right on the uh, KBLVLOP. Yes. Okay. Here is. Oh, God. This. Wow. What? Uh, oh, what, what, what? what? Oh, what is big. <laughs> uh, is Mexican pumpkin candy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's a little place called Genius Kitchen. And uh, I guess I cannot speak Spanish very well, so it's um, uh, Dulce de Calabasas Mexican pumpkin candy. So basically, the recipe here is it's the wording. Some people say it's not authentic, and other people say they love it. So it just depends on, I guess, what you like and what you, you know, you have to just kind of experiment. Just basically cut up pumpkin with some brown sugar, cloves, um, cinnamon, granulated sugar. You're just going to um, bake it in the oven. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you take all that, bring it to a boil, it's all saying you're gonna cover the stuff in it, and then you're gonna bake it. And then you're gonna turn, okay, it says, you're gonna turn off the heat and let it sit overnight, and kind of in the oven. It. Okay. After you've already baked it, it just kind of turns like this hard little rubbery thing. Some people like it, some people hate it. It's just because, like they said, experiment with something. Yes. Things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Experiment with all kinds of things. I think it will just be amazing. And I think pumpkin is, is so versatile enough where you can do stuff like just about anything else, though. So. Then there's a dessert candy. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Right? <laughs> you say candy, I'm all for it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this is something you can just kind of boil all together with the pumpkin and, you know, just make your traditional candy with yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of this stuff. That's so good. Oh, my God. Spicy roasted pumpkin wedges. Oh, Lord. Gotta love it. Gotta love right. it. Pumpkin butter. Who'd have thought? I've made apple butter before. My girlfriend and I have made apple butter before. Oh, my God. It's time-consuming, but, man, the payoff is so good. So good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but that's pretty much the yeah, for what I have for today, I was just basically just showing like the versatility of a pumpkin. You can cook in it. Yes. You can cook with it. <laughs> yep. There's just so many things you could do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You could even do like a thing where you could, you know, cut it half, turn it on its side. You could cook on top of it like sure. that if you yeah. had to. Yep. I was just looking at a picture here where that's what somebody did. They kind of cut a piece off of the pumpkin almost kind of making a bowl out of it yeah you could you could serve yeah. other dishes in it you know and use it. it on the ashes of a fire and then they they actually cooked an egg with it there you go i guess you, you do go. what you would have to do but yeah for sure so and if you guys try any of these recipes let us know how they turned out absolutely Jeez, yeah and i'm going to post a lot of these tonight on the kblploc website and also don't forget too people we are on YouTube at KBLB LLC 4 on YouTube where you can look to our programs anytime too but these recipes will be on the Facebook page yes yes we'll post them on there for you so, so. but if you try them out and let also, us know mm-hmm. and also um, some of the different preparations like hurricanes things like that yes. we'll be posting that later so you guys just kind of go go to um, KBLP LLC on Facebook, and we'll have a lot of different things there, and also the Planet B O Planet B period O period B period. And there you go. I'm gonna be posting some stuff there too. So that that's our actual website for our, for our show. So yes. We'll be going there, and yeah, you all definitely check some stuff out. So. Or share your own yeah. recipe. We'd love to hear from yeah. you. Please. Please. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it yes. doesn't even have to be. I'm coming. Let's try different things, like with the different types of gourds and things like that. Yeah. Coming, coming I love um, acorn squash. You know, you cut them in half, put the brown sugar and butter, and bake them. Oh dear God. I've never had them. Oh, you've never had acorn squash. Yeah. Oh, those are so good. Oh, yum yum. Yeah, you kind of cut them in half, scoop them out, and then um, I think that's the acorn squash. Um, and then you put brown sugar and butter in there and just bake them. Good stuff. Oh, that does sound very good. So, yeah, we'll be posting these recipes online. And, and again, we're going to just kind of reverse here and back up. Remember, be prepared. Yes. Um, especially if you live in a disaster prone area, get your stuff together, have a tent ready for shelter in place, have water, have food, have all these things available. So. There it is. Yep, there it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. All righty. Well, we have to have a laugh fest today for every podcast we do. We're just not happy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes, there it is. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, so yeah, check it out, guys, seriously. And please, like she said, be prepared. Help yourself, okay? Don't wait for help yeah. or anything because it could be quite a while. Um, so, anything else you want to add for tonight? Um, not that I can take over right now. Um, like I said, just. <laughs> 
Please, don't be a lady on TV. Yes. <laughs> okay, we have no electricity. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, speak to half, most of half of Florida there, okay? But yeah, um, yeah, please don't do that. Oh my God, that just sounded so, so bad, so bad. So yeah, we're yeah, getting closer yeah. to Halloween too. So. Ooh, I love it. Ooh, I know, I know, I'm so excited. I can't decide which horror movie to watch anymore. There's, <laughs> it's like, oh, I want that one. I want that one. I want to watch that one. I want to watch that one. Um, so, yeah, lots of movies on. You know, try some of these old recipes. You could do it while you're watching your horror movies. So there you go. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Are you ready for Halloween? Oh, yeah. yes yeah. and no. I'm never fully ready for Halloween. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I can just do it, like, forever. I just, I just love it. I love the decorations. I yes, love everything. Yes, yes. But the second it's over, I'm like, oh, Christmas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And here comes the Christmas stuff. Yes, me too. I'm the same way. It's like, hey. Uh, but, yeah, I love Halloween. I can't wait. Um, so, lots of stuff going on. So, um, let's see. I think Sports Talk will be on after this. Um, You're going on with uh, Zach? I, I guess. Zach Morrison, is that his name? Yes, yes. Um, new podcaster, I think. I'm not exactly sure what's every going on. Hear, every time I hear his name, all I can think of, even, even though that wasn't his name, it was Zach that, Morris from yeah. Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just like, dude, that's not like a made-up name. Really? I want to tell him that. It just ain't done. I know, know I know. We'll we'll see. <laughs> I'm just of, like this is middle name or something. So yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so anyway, um, nothing tomorrow. Oh, maybe I don't know. Cause uh, Saturday I have to go after work. I have to drive up to Cleveland. So I got ugh, so lovely. But anyway, like, oh, Cleveland, you know. Yeah. Go tell Drew Carey we said hi. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'll say, hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll just walk by. Hey. Um, so, <laughs> so um, let's see. Wednesday, we have um, The Walking Dead. A uh, good episode, huh? Oh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was a twist. I was didn't see Very it coming. Much, so, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. Third. I have my opinion on who's kidnapping people, too, by the way. Oh, so okay. Know. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. That'd be... An, yeah, I'm not sure about that myself. To think about it. Anyway. Um, uh, I know. Uh, I know. I know you know. You know I it all. I think I know. Well, I think I know because the, the TV series is different than the comics, but I'm thinking I'm tying into something here that happened in the TV series. Uh-huh. But you'll see. Okay. Uh, Thursday, it's music day. We have, um, let's see, what's on Thursday? I am, DWD, on Thursday. Uh, no, it Chained is first. Chained. I keep, I'm so sorry, Des. Um, Chained is first. So ch- check yeah. that out. It is really good. She does a good job with this. So uh, please check that out. Chained with uh, Desiree Pickett. Um, you will be amazed. Uh, you honestly will. Then DWD will be on. Um, and then we'll have Lolita's Jam. And she plays hip-hop and underground artists and different things. So check her out for sure. Uh, Friday, uh, we have, of course, Halloween opens across the nation. Uh, so we'll be discussing. Oh. Yeah, I know. And I won't be able to see it till like the following week. But that's okay. I will see it. Um so we'll be talking about that. Of course, A Star is Born um, uh, came out last Friday, so um, it's doing real well. They say Bradley, their their uh, performances are just amazing in this movie. So I would imagine. Yeah. And, of course, Venom. So we'll be talking about all this on Friday. Um, oh, there's Ike. Hey, Ike. Nothing like coming at the last minute. Hi, Ike. <laughs> There he Thanks. is. Um, I may do um, encounters tomorrow night, only because Saturday I'm going to be out of going out of town. So um, I may do encounters tomorrow night. 
uh, which will be haunted castles, by the way. So, um, who doesn't want to see a haunted castle? Very cool. You know? Yeah, we do an Ecto on Saturday. Yeah, and Ecto is on Saturday with our own Michelle here. Um, excellent Ooh. show. I love that show, by the way. It's really good. We um, forgot Friday night. Huh? No? Oh, free? Oh, yeah. After Hollywood Review, what do we have, Michelle? In the basement. In the basement. Yeah. <laughs> With our own big freak, uh, Chris Stevens. So, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Be sure and check the freaks out, for sure. <laughs> Stop. Okay. <laughs> Oh, dear. So, anyway, that's the lineup pretty much for the week. Oh, and then uh, the jam will be on Saturday late. Saturday night with Act Dog. Act Dog on the jam. (laughs) 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 You got to get that little twang in there. Act Dog. Um, Act Dog. There you go. And he'll be on with the jam, and that's a party all night long. He plays music from A to Z. I'm sure you'll find something you like. So there you go. And then Sunday, we're back with American Horror Story. And this is heating up pretty well, too. So, Oh, my gosh, yeah. I know, right? We're going to be at Murder House, so it's going to be awesome. Uh, so everybody stay tuned to everything. And Halloween is coming, so um, I'll probably do a Halloween special. I do still want to get out to Haunted Hydro. I've, I've put in a call for the manager there, so... Um, Keep your fingers crossed I can get out there. Maybe Halloween uh, week. Probably be Halloween week. So how cool is that? I'm excited. That would be amazing. Mm. Yeah, just a live show. People screaming and all that good stuff. Interviews. There's a place here called Forest of Freaks. Oh, uh, there is a place like that by you? Yes. Oh, Forest God. Of- I would love to go there. <laughs> Chris, your freaks have their own place. <laughs> A forest of freaks. Oh, boy. Uh, I'd love to see that. That would be so much fun. Maybe next year we can do that by you. I'll come up. There you go. That sounds like a plan, don't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, shout outs. Go ahead. Shout out to who you want. Okay. Um, we have KBLP LLC on Facebook. We have KBLP LLC 4 on YouTube. And we have our very own Planet B period, O period, B period on Facebook. Make sure you add the periods or you're going to put a pot for uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. Um, the Walking Dead Freak Show Ooh, on yeah. Facebook. I know. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Um, we have Survival Wolves. The real Survival Wolves that has like... Over 2,000 members, that's the real one, because the fake one out there. Yeah. Um, well, you can if you want, of course, you know, but I'm just saying. Um, they're they're kind of copying what's going on, but that's a long story. Yeah. Anyways, they're, they're, they're good guys, too, just I don't know what the hell's going on with all that, but anyway. <laughs> 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 Whatever. As you can tell, we always voice our opinions, so there you go. I mean, like I said, they're, they're, they're all good. Yeah. Survival is the prepper, so I don't know what's going on with this little battle. But anyway, yeah. Micron is the one that runs the survival list that I'm talking about. So there you go. Uh, so there you go. There you go. There it is. There it is. Greek wedding. So there you go. Okay, then we have conflicted with the Jews and Julie Kenny. So, yeah, just, you know, go to these nice little survival sites. And, and you know, since we would talk about Halloween, we'll talk about the horror group here. Um, there's True Horror, Jackie, that's Nisa's group. And she she has a lot of, you know, information on horror and things like that. And then there's the group that I am, which actually I'm not even... Yeah. <laughs> what the hell call me? The, the ghost mistress? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and horror free wing circus yep. and right now um, the, the co-owner at Jack she's one running that group right now she calls me the ghost mistress because <laughs> I just show up there like because <laughs> I'm so busy <laughs> and then we have the art of darkness so yep. 
There yep, you yep. go. Yep, and you so check. check out, yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, I just said, go check out some stuff and things. Stuff and things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So hope you got some good info tonight. Again, we're going to share those recipes. So share yours with us. We would greatly appreciate it. Right? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So that wraps it up for tonight. Um, Thanks for tuning in, listening to us banter and uh, rant on. (laughs) (laughs) And about five minutes of... TV three days after a freaking major hurricane. Like, our electricity is not on yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Yes. It just sounds stupid. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I hope she listens to herself and realizes this. But again, right. yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's people still buried under trees and rubble, yeah. but, you know, yeah. we're worried about your electricity. Yes. So you can have Absolutely. Your yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, so uh, check in. Yep, we have uh, about five minutes of laughter in every show, so um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> 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 yes, we do. We have so much fun. Really, but it's anyway. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Going to say good night. <laughs> or try to, anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, see you next time on Planet B period, O period, B period. Night, everyone. Have a good, have a good night, y'all. <laughs>
the one I 